Hey, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop with another episode of Shelf Life, where I look at games I covered about six months ago and let you know whether they stayed in my collection or for crowdfunding games if I decided to back them or I'm getting a review copy. And today we're looking back at July of 2021, looking at eight games I covered. Let's get right to it and find out which of them had Shelf Life. So first is a crowdfunding game, Soul Raiders. This is an adventure game, solo and co-op, where you use these action cards like you see on the board at the moment. You engage in combat with enemies, and you also move around these locations, which are these really nice, like, big cards, and they have, like, things to discover and secret entrances, and, like, things change as you turn them over. Uh, all that was really cool, but this is one that I did not end up going for, and I'm not even sure if I'll ask for a review copy. I mean, if they offer, I might say yes. But my big complaint was that as you got hurt more in the game and as time ran out, you became weaker and weaker and like had less you could do on your turn. So you kind of got into like this sort of death cycle, which I just thought was really like a misstep in design. And also just wasn't really much fun. And also, uh, at least from the Kickstarter, it seemed like the content is a little bit maybe too limited on this one. I think they have like three scenarios. And while there are some branching paths and different ways to go, um, it just didn't uh, wow me with the amount of content or the overall gameplay. Next on the list is Distilled. This is a competitive Euro game where you are distilling uh, different spirits. And it also has a solo mode. And this one is a very beautiful production. Uh, here you can see like the scoring board and the round board and your player board, like really nice production overall. And uh, this was kind of a fun one. I enjoy a lot about this. Uh, one of the things is uh, you combine these cards of ingredients and then you uh, try to distill the spirit and like based on which things come out, you might get a different uh, recipe than you were hoping for or might have like different flavors. So even though I don't know much about this kind of thing, the theme was really strong. There's nice variety of things you can buy and the characters you start as. And the solo mode is pretty cool. Instead of having an automa to compete against, you have these solo goal cards and they're kind of like a pyramid. So you have to do some of each letter and it adds nice variety and kind of like forces you down to different pads each time you play, which I appreciate in Euros. Uh, that being said, you know, competitive Euros are not my favorite thing. So this is one that I might not have gone for, but they did specifically offer to send me a review copy. And I enjoyed it enough to uh, definitely cover it again, like do a full playthrough of the final version and a review. But honestly, uh, after that, I expect I'll probably give it to Peter or one of my friends who likes uh, solo Euros more. But uh, yeah, I'll still count this as a keep because I am definitely going to give it another chance. But one that I'm not going to give another chance to is this one, Oros. This is another sort of competitive Euro game. You are gods and kind of in a populist style for our old uh, PC game fans. <laughs> you are building out this board of island tiles, trying to get these temples that will earn you victory points and will also let you like level up your abilities, giving you different access to different god powers uh, with these little player boards you're seeing right here. And it also has different automa that act in different ways, which is a pretty cool idea. Like they have different uh, abilities or sort of things they focus on. Uh, that being said, I found the competitive game uh, kind of too samey, like it has basically the exact same setup every time so not enough variety there and as for the solo co-op it was fine but personally i didn't think that the balance between the different tracks and level ups you could do was right <laughs> you know i might be totally off on that but that's just how it seemed to me so i always went for kind of the same power-ups and did pretty well with them and other ones like seemed way too weak to really waste your time with so uh for me the thing that makes euros really sing is when i have a lot of different paths to pursue and this one just didn't seem to have that in either mode of play for my taste so uh, or is when I passed on. And man, there were just a lot of uh, Euros in July, I guess. This next one is On Mars and also the Alien Invasion expansion. So On Mars is available in retail right now. And then the Alien Invasion was uh, kickstarted, crowdfunded last year. And this is a very heavy Lacerda style Euro. I thought it was uh, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was an interesting mix of uh, kind of building out your uh, base like you see here and unlocking different resources. And the solo mode out of the base game was okay. Um, and then they had a new solo mode in the Alien Invasion expansion that I thought was also okay. <laughs> like I liked some things better about it, but also liked some things worse. And then they had some co-op scenarios in the new expansion. Those I thought were really cool, but they also seemed to have less replay. They were kind of like maybe something I'd do once or twice. So uh, yeah, overall, this is a very, very heavy Euro and not at all my bag, <laughs> not, not even slightly to my taste. So uh, this is not one that I wanted to keep or uh, hang around with, but I still think it's a great design. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed both this and the Galaris, which are the two Lacerdas I've spent the most time with. So if you like heavy euros, this might be one to check out. And again, the Alien Invasion expansion has uh, solo and co-op and competitive, so a lot to like there, but uh, was not for me. And next we have Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I covered it with the uh, Secrets and Soirees expansion. 
And this is <laughs> another Euro, a tile laying one this time. Um, this is a cool solo expansion. It's kind of like Libertalia that I covered last week in that they have two different uh, forms of Otoma. Or no, I guess it's not like Libertalia at all. What am I talking about? <laughs> that has two Otoma that you go against. But this one uh, has two different versions of play and also has two Otoma. I'm confusing myself, but there are some things to like here. I thought the uh, tile laying was kind of interesting. The Atoma played very smoothly in both play modes. I do like the whole castle concept in that you're like stacking tiles on top of each other and like that'll kind of uh, control how they score and such. Uh, the expansion is good, but I don't know. It's a tile laying Euro. I, I had <laughs> basically zero excitement with the game. It's just not, again, to my taste, but I don't really have any major complaints about it. I think it plays very well. And for those who do enjoy tile laying games, I think this is a good one to check out. All right, and then finally we get to a sort of more thematic game, <laughs> more Mike Speed. This is Imperium Classics and Legends. This is a one to four player deck builder with a solo Otoma, uh, where you go against a very unique different Otoma, like with different nations and civilizations, and you roll this die to kind of determine what they do and what they buy and resolve actions by like this little matrix they have. And then you're also doing your own deck building. It's very much an engine building deck builder. You can like really combo things together uh, to go along with like the strengths of your civilization. And there's some cards that are unique to your civilization that I build into. I liked all of this. This uh, was one of my top deck builders on my top deck builder list, one of my top games of 2021. So I don't think any of you will be surprised to know that I'm keeping this one and I'm trying to get a copy of Legends. Right now I still have only played Classics. But yeah, the engine building here is great. The Atoma can be a little bit of a bear to play, especially at first, and the scoring can be a drag and setup can be annoying. But uh, once you get past all the fiddly bits of that, the actual gameplay and the engine building and the deck building are really great. And it's one of those deck builders where you have a limited number of actions. So you don't just play every card kind of on autopilot. You have to actually like kind of think through what you do on your turn. I think that's awesome. It's a very tactical and interesting game and one I really enjoy and expect to keep for quite a while. And almost done, game number seven is Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden. This is a card laying game where you're trying to build out a garden with different uh, shapes and like combinations of cards to score victory points. And then you got like these neighbors that try to steal your stuff. The neighbor mechanic was kind of random. I didn't really like how it actually resolved. I didn't feel like I had enough control, but I still think it's sort of cool that you can like try to manipulate your neighbors so that they uh, steal like the right thing and not the wrong thing. But uh, the big thing that was the negative for me, and I said this in my review, is that I find the game way too samey each time I play it because there is no variety in the scoring cards that are available and some of them are worth way more points. So you kind of always want to go for the same ones. I think if they had some way to vary that up and like you drew uh, different cards and you know, like you had to go for three of them or you had like a different assortment of scoring cards every game or different goals to pursue would be awesome without that uh this one is very much a micro game with not enough gameplay there for me and my taste so uh no thank you mr cabbage heads garden sorry and finally we get to our most thematic game of the month this is dawn of the zeds third edition and i mean you can kind of already guess the answer here because this is a game that i featured again i did a, a video for it uh, over a year ago i think and then i did another one in july showing a more complicated mode of the game because that's one of the well potentially annoying things about the game, but also one of the cool things in that you can make it very like family friendly. Well, except for the art <laughs> and the theme, but you can make it a really light game or you can go really crunchy with it. Now, that does mean that they have like 50 rule books, which I know is a big complaint about the game. And it also can be very tough. But uh, this one, I love the theme of it. I love the emergent storytelling, the incredibly diverse heroes you can use, which really have to change up your entire strategy for the game. The uh, incredibly diverse events that can come out that kind of control how the game flow goes. Uh, um, it's not a great co-op game because you're just basically dividing everything up you do. So it uh, really depends on like your group. If you're just like kind of discussing actions and don't care who kind of owns that action, then it can be a lot of fun. But for solo, this one is excellent. I hope they do a fourth edition or a reprint of it soon because I think this game is great and I want more people to have access to it. So there you go, another month down. Thanks, July 2021. And don't leave just yet. We're going to go into the voting for the contest, see who was most surprised and least surprised by games and find out who our big winner is. All right, here we go with the contest results and how everyone voted. Let's get right to it. In group one, 38% voted that would call them both the most popular answer, although in this case, wrong. 35% <laughs> voted with Soul Raiders, which I did not end up backing. So distilled with 27%, the lowest answer was the correct one. This was a tough one for a lot of people. Then getting into group two, we had the correct answer, called them both at 49%. About 50% of you called this one correctly. Between Two Castles got the next largest vote, 39%, and very few people thought I kept Oro. So I guess my negative, uh, somewhat negative review of that one uh, led them that way. Daddy only got 12%. Group three, and we have Imperium. 87% thought I would keep Imperium. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when again, that was one of my top games of the year and top deck builders of all time. Not too surprising. 
Uh, called them both was the next most popular answer with 9%. Only 4% thought I would keep Mr. Cabbage Head's garden. That might be the lowest result for any game in Shelf Life contest history. And finally, in group four, Dawn of the Zeds, 58%. The correct answer, getting a big portion of the vote there. Called them both was next with 23%. And only 19% thought I would keep on Mars. I think my... Uh, Reputation for keeping heavy euros is maybe pretty well established now. We had a bunch of people get four out of five correct. I think it was about, uh, yes, 10 of them. And several of our regulars showing up, especially Carl. Man, he always does well on this one. But do we have any five out of five perfect scores to challenge those 10? Indeed we did. We have Hana uh, back on the list again. Matthew Powers, Eternal Loser, not their real name. <laughs> uh, Scott, Tristan, Roland, uh, Dashiel, Marie, Ian, Aran, Charlie, and Patrick. Sorry if I mispronounced any names. And Hana decided that she didn't want to be in the contest. I think it's like two months in a row that she got a perfect score and bowed out. Hana, feel free. I can send you a gift card. I know you're not uh, in the US, but I'm happy to reward you something. And the five red names are Patreon supporters, which means they get double entries. So here's our breakdown. Uh, Matthew's on a one to two, Eternal Loser three to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to 10 for Marie, 11, 12, 13 to 14 for Charlie, 15 to 16 to Patrick. We're gonna go to a 20-sided die because we have so many people this time and if we get a 17 through 20 we'll just re-roll and here we go a three okay that's a low number who was it <laughs> that would be irony eternal loser you are the this moment winner that was not a good opposite <laughs> But yes, uh, congratulations. Uh, I don't actually remember who that is, so I'll have to go look at the email address and see if I know them. But thanks to Eternal. Thanks to everybody else for entering the contest. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next month with another episode of Shelf Life.